by piece by piece, we just leave them in the landscape because it's minerals that have, been extract, that have been absorbed and extracted from the soil deeper in the soil than the shrubs and perennials and annuals can do. And pulling those minerals and elements out, putting it into leaves, acorns, fruiting structures of whatever, dropping those annually, and then when the tree dies, it's just like a big Osmico tablet falling to the ground and it breaks. I'm, I'm serious, I know it sounds funny, but I'm serious. It's slow-release fertilizer. We've got a magnolia macuminata, green cucumber magnolia from the mountains. We planted 18 inches tall with two huge white oak trunks that were cut about three feet high and were too big for the lumber mill. So the guy asked me if we wanted them. It's like somebody asking me if I want 500 pounds of Osmico. I said, sure, I'll take it. We placed them there with the bobcat. The tree is now close to 25 feet tall in four years. And that's abnormal. The species does grow fast, but not that fast. So I think the tree breaking down is rotting, just piece by piece is falling off and falling around the tree, has really helped that tree grow. So take advantage of those chips. They're good for erosion control. They're good for building paths. It's free. Um, you can see here a good start in developing the Sand Hills ecosystems, first year of 2006, 2007. Uh, different, slightly different angle. The shade of the tree is, is there was no, no hills in the shady area. Now there's, uh, whoop, now there's three hills, three or four there. And then from a different angle, you can see them. And then we have to sculpt them, and you can see what it begins to take shape and look like. Just using your imagination. If you step into it behind that, and behind that, and you step into it, you can see these black rocks. If you walk around this way and go in by that mulch there, that's what you're looking at, a trail that goes up over the sand hills and we've sculpted the sand hills together simply by using a hard rock rake or shovel and pitching sand from pile to pile. And Glenda, don't go to sleep, I'll find you. <laughs> Another retention pond, we have eight total retention ponds. If I take my shirt off, will you stay away? <laughs> um, I won't do that because you get to see my uh, muffin top. Um, but this is, there's some zoysia, we, we kept some of it, I, mean, I had two acres of it, but we kept some of it. Um, but the same site, uh, the second year uh, we were in the property, and there was a retention pond to catch the runoff so it wouldn't wash my driveway away, my parking lot, and this is taken just recently, uh, after the tornadoes, when we had three and a half inches of rain, um, which we needed bad but it was a little much. Um, but you can see uh, the difference. Here's a Georgia oak right there. Look at it. Beautiful tree. I just sold one. There it is. It's a little guy. And in five years, this one's about eight feet high now. Um, and I wish I had the salvia urticifolia, but I don't. Here, the first in the main retention pond is started. That was our largest and our first focal point of a retention pond. Is in basically in the center of the property. Back there is the little woodland garden, which it will eventually. I have no clue what that object is right there. It looks like a sawhorse, but I don't own one. I thought it was alien. Um, we plan for this to be woodland all the way to, to the sand hills and beyond to the highway. We've planted about 15 or 30 trees out here. They're oak trees. And you know, everybody, oh, it'll be 100 years before we appreciate it. That's not true. We planted Quercus millibergia uh, when it was six foot tall four years ago. Now it is 20, 21 foot tall and producing acorns. It will grow to 70 or 80, but it's grown really fast. So the woodland gardens there it will expand, but once we get through with all the development, we built an earth pond, read a little book on earthing ponds, built it. There it is, almost finished. I put mulch around 
It's got water in it now. Sand hills are taking construction. So it's kind of in chronological order. We wrestled with putting the uh, wrestled with putting the before and after pictures because it messes up the chronological pattern of what I'm doing. But we had to show you before and after. You really don't appreciate it. And there it is, full after the, the uh, tornadoes came through in our three and a half inches of rain. And do you see that little dark spot in the lower right end of the screen? That's about 200 toad tadpoles clustered in that shallow, warm water. And when I walked over there, they all <laughs> scattered. But I've got fish all in here. Uh, it's, 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 in the five years that it's been there, it's, it's drawn fox, deer, of course everybody has long-legged goats, um, deer, um, frogs, turtles, snakes. Um, I think that I saw some bobcat tracks, but it could have just been a big, fat, happy cat. There it is, full pool. And this is the same place. There's the well house. There was nothing but lawn in this area. And now it's a diverse ecosystem. And like I said, it, this one holds, a, we estimate, about 5,000 gallons of water. And it fills up with a three and a half inch rain. And uh, hydrates slowly, supports the flora and fauna. Here's another small rain. What you got here is if you're on a slope, and we are, to help build this, this natural ecosystem. We have the main pond, which is just, there's two or three small ponds in the sand hills that hold 500 gallons of water, 1,000 gallons of water. Here's the main one that catches most of it that runs out of the sand hills. That's why there's so much sand right there. See, it erodes down. It catches it, and then if it overflows, it goes into that small pond on the other side, or closest to me in the back. You see a little pool of water? And if that one overflows, it flows into this one, downhill. And if that one overflows, it flows into that one. So I can hold approximately 20,000 gallons of water, 30,000 gallons of water, within my whole one and a half acre lot. We're on 2.3 acres. We estimate the house and the hard surfaces and the shrub area where we market and sell shrubs and perennials takes up about a half an acre. So we're dealing with roughly a half acre and a half of wild area that we've reclaimed into our national park. And here's another retention pond somewhere. But you can see blah, 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 blah. And I don't want to repeat myself so much. And I've got a lot of slides, so I'm going fast.